All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechak Rosh, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Wak Wathim, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity. And this is going to be another video through the Spirit. I came across this clip from the brother from this channel, GMS Pond Precepts. Now, I forget who's the main speaker on this channel. Uh, I believe it's one of the brothers from down south, one of the elder brothers. But this video, now I'm, I'm going to let this clip play and I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking because I don't want them to flag me for, you know, rude speech. But it says European 1948ers have no connection to the ancient Israelites. All right. And so we're about to get into that. We're going to play another clip also from a brother uh, from the L.A. camp, GMS. Uh, I forget the name of the channel. It's like L.A. Yeshaya. All right, we're going to play his video, but basically we're going to be dealing with how these Amalekites are not the chosen and they know that. And many times, you know, they'll let their tongue fall upon themselves. Uh, now, the, the, there's another video I'm going to do. I'm going to basically do a part two. I'm going to make it its own whole video. Uh, so that in case, basically is it's, it's some juicy stuff in the other video. So if one goes down, the other will, will still be up. So let me let this... Uh, play for a minute so let's let it go the palestinians and arabs are semites themselves that anti-semitism is through throughout much of history uh, a uniquely european phenomenon it was essentially a way of saying um, it, was, it was a way of persecuting a group of people for the false historical accusation, this false historical allegation that they had um, descended from uh, uh, historic Palestine. The reality, of course... So what he just said is that the people who are claiming to be those people for hundreds of years, they have been under a false allegation. It is what it is. He said it, not me. As, as most historians recognize that much of European Jews and much of the European Jewish colonizers of Palestine are all descendants of medieval converts to Judaism mm. and that uh, uh, Medieval converts and we're gonna get into that All right re uh, Realistically um, The blood of the ancient Israelites most likely flows in the blood of Palestinians if um, Zionism is a supremacist yeah, he was incorrect on that one the true the now you have people that are in the land you know, you, you have some northern kingdom that's mixed amongst those Arabs. But the true blood of the Israelites, we understand, is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, he's incorrect on that statement. You know, he's an Ishmaelite, I believe. So he's still trying to wage the war in his direction. All right. So, you know, he can, he can get out of here with that one. Ideology. Um, isn't ironic that also Jews are the targets? And by the way, this is legitimate. Anti-Semitism is a real thing. I may not necessarily agree with its relevance to the issue of Palestine, but anti-Semitism is a very real thing. And there are white supremacists uh, out there who hold Jewish lives and Muslim lives and Palestinian lives with equal contempt. So um, a lot of the, the uh, people that were massacring Palestinians, the people that I mentioned who would kill in such horrific and gruesome ways Palestinian children, um, committed acts of, of sexual violence. Uh, these, these death squads, the Irgun, the Haganah, Kaf al-Aswad, the Black Hand, they would later evolve into the modern Israeli defense forces. And that's something I didn't know. You know, you learn something new every day. So apparently the militias you know, when uh, Amalek, you know, E was up in that land when he first started getting over there in that land. And, you know, it makes all the sense because they weren't the they weren't a, a recognized army yet. So they began actually as a coalition of militias. Uh, then they would, have, you know, became a, a standing army the same way that America did. When America was being founded, they didn't start out. There was no such thing as, you know, the American army. At first, they were just men with goats and would not goats men with coats on and guns and then after you know finally winning and kicking out the so-called british then they became a official standing army the same thing over there in that land those people went there they colonized they killed the people that were there and then they took over 
and they're claiming to be some. There's no the direct blood relation between the ancient Israelites and the European colonizers. Mm. There's no direct blood relation between the ancient Israelites and the European colonizers. Mm. There's no direct blood relation between the ancient Israelites and the European colonizers. And he said it and not me, you know, so we're not making this stuff up. So let's get this real quick, just to, just to just show something. We're going to go grab a couple points out of history. Lamentations 5 and 2. Now, what does the Bible say? All right. What does the Bible say about the a state of the Israelites. Lamentations 5 and 1. It says, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. All right, the true Israelites are in a low estate. They are reproached by the world. It says, Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. What was the inheritance of the Israelites? The land of Israel. And it just told you that the land that was owned by the true Israelites has been given to people that are heathens. It has been given to strangers. It has been given to aliens, not big head, great, gray skin, black eyed, you know, outer space creatures, but aliens as in a person not from the same land, a person not from your nation. All right. So we, hey, the land of Israel is being controlled over by heathens, by non Israelites. Thus saith the Bible. Fuck what vocab has to say. Fuck what any wannabe historian has to say. The Bible says that people that would be in that land right now at the last day, days and times, the majority of them are heathens, all right? And they took that land from the true people. Let's get another scripture out of Ezekiel, one of my favorites that I like going to to show it. Ezekiel, I want to say 29 or is it 39? Shit, let me turn that AC back on, y'all. Salakia. It's like 90 fucking degrees out here. <laughs> uh... Salakia, Ezekiel. Ooh, what is it? 36? And is it 36? Let me see. Okay, yeah, I was looking right at it. Ezekiel 36 and verse uh, 5. It says, Therefore thus saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai power. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. And against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession, with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. So this scripture lets you know that not only did Esau Edom, all right, the modern day white man, take over the land of Israel, but also the heathen, which is why you have the other nations there. You have Arabs in there, you have Hamites in there, you have all types of people mixed in there, but it's a majority of Edom by way of Amalek and Ishmael. And, uh, you know, you, you got Elam mixed in there, too. But mainly mainly uh, Amalek and Ishmael are in our lands. All right. And the Heavenly Father said he's going to get revenge against them for taking over our land. So these scoffers, basically, they can go eat up. They can go eat rocks. These scoffers can go eat rocks for all I'm concerned. And I'm, I'm going to get another scripture because he mentioned the fact that those people converted in medieval times and we're going to get two examples of their conversion the main one that he's probably referring to is under keegan bullen the khazar king you know converted to what's known as Judea, uh, judaism all right to calm the relations all right between uh, uh you know themselves the christians and the the uh, muslims but we're, we're going to get this out of history real quick let me get this dealing with even further back right here this is john hycranus the first now, this was one of the descendants of the Maccabees, all right? I believe, actually, John, I, I believe this is the son of Simon, all right? I believe this is John Hycranus, the son of Simon. And this is nothing new. You know, brothers have brought this out, but just pulling this up just to show you. This is John Hycranus the, uh, the first, king of Judea. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was a, he was a Levite. Yep, so I believe this is Simon's son. It says, high priest and ruler of the Jewish nation from 135 to 134 uh, from 135 134 to 104 BC under his reign the Hasmonean kingdom of Judea Hasmonean is a is an interchangeable word with Maccabean all right when you see Hasmonean that's interchangeable with the Maccabeans because he was of that lineage he was of that household it says kingdom of Judea and ancient Palestine attained power and great prosperity and the Pharisees a scholarly sect with popular backing and the Sadducees an aristocratic sect that comp that comprised the priesthood became well-defined religious parties all right so now we're going to jump down because i want to get to one of the things that he did 
It says, uh, yeah, yep. It says Hycranus was the youngest son of Simon Maccabeus and thus a member of the Hasmonean dynasty, so called after an, an ancestor named Hasmonius. Con, okay, so yeah, so he was the son of Simon. But what we're actually going to jump down to is one of the things that he did right here. Uh, right here, where I have it highlighted. It says. He successfully thwarted Syrian incursions by alliance with Rome and conquered the unfriendly neighboring territory, territories of Samaria and Idumea. Edom, all right? Who is Edom today? We should all know. As a matter of fact, y'all, I got the book coming, coming in the mail, Who is Esau Edom? And I can't wait to dig into it and to start reading it, you know, start getting some videos done. All right, it says, He forced Idumea to convert to Judaism, the first example of conversion imposed by the Jews in their history. All right, so this was the first time ever Israelites, the true Israelites, and this would at this time so-called uh, the so-called northern or not the, the so-called Latinos and Native Americans, which make up the northern kingdom. They were already over here in the Americas by this time. So the group that was left in the land was southern kingdom, the so-called Negroes. All right, the so-called African Americans, uh, uh, Haitians and uh, Jamaicans, you know, as they're known as today, they converted Edomites. All right, so-called white people did today forcing them to follow our customs. All right, this was this is when that began. This was one of the this was the first instance, and then it was going to happen again uh, later. All right, so and, and when you read through uh, the fall of seventy A.D., you had Edomites that were helping actual Israelites fight against Rome. All right, so after this conversion, after this time point, you would have had Edomites. You know started trickling their way in you know saying that they're israelites you know they you know they converted they would have been trying to keep the torah this is when they would have started introducing themselves in so then naturally when all of us were kicked out in 70 a.d they you know they just they was like okay shit we already been to we already been learning what to do for the past uh 60 some years under john i Cranus. so we just gonna swoop right in repaint everything put on everybody clothes and swoop right in and that's what they did all right, this is in history, but you're not going to learn that in school. So now we're going to go to this video. All right, now we're going to go to this video by the brother, and we're going to let this play. All right, because that was the first conversion in the time of John High, John High Cranus, but this is going to get into the time period of the medieval conversion that that guy mentioned in that video. So, hey, I'm, I'm surprised this video is still up, but we're going to let this play for a minute. Gaza. You're for Gaza, the Gaza state Strip? Palestine, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, are against the state of Israel of uh, Are you, are you, you said you're for Gaza? Yes, we are against the state of Israel. Are, are you, yes. you're against the state of Israel? Yes, we believe, the Jewish believe is against the state of Israel. Are you for the real return of uh, the real children of Israel? We believe that all Israel needs to be returned to the Palestinians. Do you, do you know that the black man in America is Israel? That he's Jews? Do you know that? Yes. 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 I'd like to now bring up another interesting place. To hey, vocab. You know, all you scoffers. Once again, one of my biggest issues when other people that are not Israelites and don't believe in the Israelites, when they admit that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the true Israelites, what do y'all have to say to that? Y'all have to acknowledge that. You have to come. You have to come say something to that. All right. So now this guy. He is an Amalekite. He is a descendant of one of the converts, and even he is going to admit some truth right here. So we're going to let it play. All right, I'm not going to let this whole video play. I'm going to let about four minutes go, and that'll be it for this one. Then I'm going to do part two here in a minute. But here, hey, these people are going to admit themselves the truth. All right. You find descendants of the Israelites, but may not necessarily be from the ten tribes, but will also play a role. And it shouldn't be overlooked. It's a very serious scenario. This is in Africa. Africa has perhaps hundreds of millions of people with this identity right now of being from the people of Israel. Does that mean they were from the ten tribes? Likely not. We were taught by the historians and within our own traditions that when the Romans conquered Judea a few hundred years after that the tribes of Israel went into exile, 
perhaps millions of Judeans were sold into slavery. And that event that he's talking about in the picture that is being shown is dealing with 70 AD. All right, that is that that is that is being shown the uh, the uh, menorah being carried out of the temple. You know, when we were kicked out, and where did many of us flee to? Africa. All right, uh, mainly West Africa, but you would have had some of us scattered to other parts. And he's a, he's about to mention this history, and this dude. Uh, what was his last name Rosenberg? You know, hey, scoffers, hey, y'all have to address this. Into Africa, into Rome, deep into Africa. And if you look now, you're seeing people who are most likely the descendants of those slaves who kept true. I like to bring. He's talking about us because we're the ones waking up, realizing, and acknowledging who we are because we started, we left out of Rome. You know, or not that we ran out of Israel, ran to Africa, and were taken slaves here and been scattered. And now we've woken back up in the lands of our captivities, as the scriptures say. I'll get that out of the book of Baruch real quick, and I'll go back to the video. All right, just to back it up in scripture, Baruch 2 and 30. And I can grab this in any other part of the Bible as well, all right, for you. Well, that's the Apocrypha. I can grab it in 10 other places if I need to. All right, Baruch 2 and 30. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me. Because it is a stick neck people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And that's what happened. So we were taking slaves out of our holy land and put in different parts of the world. And in these different parts of the world is where we will acknowledge that we are the true children of Israel. What group of people fit that prophecy? All right. Stop playing with yourself. Shit. Bring up a few specific examples. So they're going to be game changers. Game changers. Another area in Africa have uh, something big happening is in Nigeria you have the Igbo people Nigeria or Igbo pronounced either way and where it gets interesting is in America there was a slave trade and a lot of the slaves a very high percentage of them came from western Nigerian ports yep. and in America today you see a, a very large movement of African Americans who say that they're the real chosen people that they're the children of Israel they're the Judeans you know so what are they just trying to create a, an identity for themselves because they were slaves or is there really something here and the answer is most likely there is something there and most likely maybe that they were the original Israelites and maybe that the Jewish people today who are white Caucasian people um, came in a little bit later on we know that some of the greatest sages of the transmission of the Torah were converts from Rome. <laughs> hey, somebody just got up out their chair. Somebody says shit and got the hell on. So he just admitted it. Yes, we, we are the true children of Israel and y'all are converts that showed up at a latter time period. It's as simple as that. All the arguing should be over, you know. You have a man named Uncleus who wrote a commentary on the Torah unprecedented that we still learn today he was a convert some of the largest pillars on the transmission today were roman converts so here we are we're you know i'm speaking we're ca caucasian jewish people and now you have people in africa saying that they're the real people of israel it can't be ruled out at all you know they were sold into slavery we know now that they're fulfilling prophecies by saying we're coming back mind blowing so everyone kind of got humbled a little bit who, who laughed at them and said now now, now what now what do we do about this this could have tremendous implications concentrated in the shadow of the south pansburg mountains so right there he admitted it all right so now i'm gonna fast forward because this is a, a part of the video but i want to fast forward i want to get two more clips specifically there's that guy talking let me see where the next one okay where he's discussing keegan bull and con all right so let me fast forward to my guy right here and let him talk. Why do they invest money, bring white people and so on? When they build their system of white supremacy, just like in America they build in Israel, why? And I can tell you why. Because the true Jews, according to the Bible, you can check it in the Bible, you can read the Job 30, 30 and some other places. They have never been white. They have being people of color and they have not stopped in Ethiopia they were in West in Ethiopia Sudan and they have settled in West Africa from West Africa they have been taken as a slaves to America 
brothers and sisters, blacks of America, it's you. You are the true Hebrews. You are the true. We don't need a white man's confirmation, but this just goes to show you, you know, the truth is coming out. And that scripture perfect is on the screen, Hosea 1 and 10. And in the place where it is said unto them, ye are not my people, it will be said to them, ye are the sons of the living power. We are fulfilling that prophecy. He had to take the glasses off. He had to break it down, y'all. He says, he said, I had to, hold up. You know, he had to take the glasses off. We are the true children of Israel. And it is what it is. There's no discussing it. Everybody knows it. Everyone knew it except for us. Hebrews from the Bible. America gonna be, do everything. Gonna invest as much money as it has. And gonna fight as much wars as they as they can. Gonna invite as much weapons as they can just to hide this away from you. And that's true. America will do whatever it can. And not just America. This beat this man's beast system because America is the whore that rideth the beast. All right. So Esau, Edom. His entire, his entire governmental conglomerate will do what it has to do to keep us broken down, stuck in the hoods, on EBT, on food stamps, you know, uh, giving you that little stupid little check to keep you sleep. All right, which is why we, we, we're not, hey, people like Vocab, yes, this man will hire people to just straight up lie on us. He will hire people to pretend like they're actually trying to do something good. Meanwhile, they're undermining us. This man has spent millions of billions of zillions of dollars to get us down this low. He'll spend millions of billions of zillions more to try to keep us here. So is, are we crazy conspiracy theorists or is there something going on here? Is this man a crazy conspiracy theorist or is he telling the truth? God damn it. Gonna take Israel, gonna bring white people here and to tell you these are the Jews. Gonna do, gonna kill you years out of northern turkey now this guy because in the clip that i showed earlier he mentioned converts in medieval times so now we're going to see what he was talking about i'm living in israel and i'm part of this uh, injustice let me tell you about the flight of the khazar warriors out of northern turkey in 500 a.d they were a despicable bunch you could go to the king of the khazars and rent an army from him an army of 40 or 50,000 men, but it didn't matter what kind of a deal you struck with their monarch. He wasn't called a king, he was called a shagan. Once the battle was done, they rape and pillage. Doesn't matter what kind of agreement you had with the king, that's the way it ended up. And so as a consequence, people in the area garnered a great deal of animosity for these Khazar warriors. And in 500 AD, they were driven out, and as they came down south... That's, that's how Esau lives, y'all. Whenever Esau sets up in the world, he starts causing war all around him. Revelation 6, and he, he was that man, that man that would took peace from the earth. Matter of fact, you know, this in the Josephus, uh, basically the children of Cain went around and started causing destruction. But just to show you, whenever this man Esau Edom gets set up, what does he start doing to his immediate surrounding area? He starts causing havoc, destruction... And wickedness which it fits right along that these that those were some of his ancestors the Khazars all right and man this dude he's such a liar he he's such a piece of shit we have the truth now so it's all good all right uh, Mac uh, first Maccabees 1 and 1, 1 and 9 it says and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves so did their sons after many years and evils were multiplied in the earth this is dealing with the Greeks all right after Alexander died, his servants started taking the crowns and their children, their children. And it tells you that evil is multiplied because what does this man do? Whenever he gets set up, he goes from landmass to man, landmass, killing and destroying, killing and destroying, killing and destroying, taking a piece away from the earth. Who else does that fit? What are those Amalekites over there doing? There is constant war and havoc in the Middle East because of the, those assholes. South out of uh, Turkey, some fled to the west into Romania and Hungary and became the gypsies. The rest followed their monarch, the Chagan, up into the steppes of Russia you know, and north of there to the ca uh, Caucasus Mountains. And as they settled in there, they... And just to say something real quick, now when you look at the facial features of people that are, you know, Russian, Arab, uh, Turkish, you know, a lot of them share a lot of similar facial facial features and uh, Amalek, uh, Amalek. They have that that long. Some of them have got that hook nose. Some of them have that a little bit of dusty skin, that short black hair. You know, a lot of them share that Middle Eastern look, and this makes 
all the sense in the world, all right? Amalek was was ripping and running, you know, having children uh, with hey, those ch those heathens were having children with Edom, and Edom was having children with those heathens, which is why a lot of those assholes share similar facial features. You'll see a guy, you'll think that he's Arab, and he'll tell you he's from France. He's actually Edomite, but he looks he's an Arab-looking motherfucker from France. Why? Because they were all intermingling. Relatively, well, they quite easily enslaved the relatively peaceful agrarian Slavic folks that were indigenous to the area. Then they came under pressure to take sides in a growing contention around them. Coming down from the north was Eastern Orthodox Christianity, and coming up from the south was Islam. And they knew that if they succumbed to pressure from either of those to join their organization and embrace their philosophy, it would surely offend the other. And so what they did was a politically expedient maneuver. He called in all the religious leaders of the area, and he got their input. And after the input, he announced for me and my people, talking about 20 million people and about 4,000 nobility. For me and my people, we choose to become Jews. Now, this was not a heartfelt conversion. This was not something that... W that's, when they, that's when many of them converted to what is called Judaism. This was the medieval uh, conversion time period that that man was referring to in the beginning. And now part two of this video is going to deal with... Now, a lot of these Amalekites know this history. Some of them like to pretend like they don't, but a lot of them like to just say, oh, well, that's just a lie. That's just a theory. You know, they try to, ju they just want to ignore that history away. Here it is. You got the Big Bang Theory. You got damn theory of this, the theory of that. You accept all them theories, but you don't want to, now d this is a theory you don't want to deal with. Showing you this motherfucker is the damn, the damn devil. He'll take his lies when they benefit him. He'll throw them out the window when they don't. <laughs> deep in their breasts that they felt they needed to uh, make a conversion because they thought that was the proper way to serve the creator this was something that was done as a political expediency and in the course of studying about their new religion and you do have to study it even if you're only going to charade it is absolutely necessary to study about it so that you can fake it and in the course of doing so, they came across a character with whom they could truly identify. It was Lucifer, the morning light that fell from grace and became Satan, the adversary. And they formed an inner circle within Judaism dedicated to the forces of evil. We're talking about these Khazar warriors that only pretended to embrace Judaism. And so today, we find that about 92% of the people who claim to be Jews. Bam, right here. All right, and, and you see it in their actions, man. These, they don't, they don't act according to the way of the Heavenly Father. They act, they follow, they daddy Satan on the left-hand side, you know. That's who they follow. Jews really aren't. They don't have a drop of Semitic blood in their veins. Now, that's not, you know, they are Semitic, but they're of the line of Esau, all right? So they're all a bunch of liars at the end of the day. And that's a perfect way to end it, shit. Look at that picture, y'all. That's our enemies, y'all. Those are our motherfucking enemies. Fuck, fuck uh, Trajan down the street. You know, hey, two the Lord gonna take care of two-thirds. These motherfuckers right here are lined up. We need they motherfucking heads off. ASAP. <laughs> a fucking sap. A sat. Our Khazar warriors with a new bent on life and a goal to conquer. Right there, that look. That 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 ambiguous, he could be Arab, he could be white, he could be Russian type look. That's how a lot of them look. Because that those hey, that's them, y'all. You know, so hey, that's about it for this video. We didn't we didn't figure it out. We know who we are, these heathens know who we are. So now we're almost on our way out of here. So I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakhak Rosh, to the elders and apostles of the Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Wah, Akwathim, learning and teaching truth and sincerity. And I'm going to say Shalom.